Cash and I want to read to you a really interesting tale. It's by Eugene Trivias and Helen Oxenbury. It's the three little wolves and the big bad pig. Hmm. Remember we've read the three little pigs and we understood what happened in that story and then we read the true story of the three little pigs and we heard the wolf's point of view. Let's read this one and get this take. Once upon a time, there were three cuddly little wolves with soft fur and fluffy tails who lived with their mother. The first was black, the second was gray, and the third was white. One day, the mother called the three little wolves around her and said, My children, it is time for you to go out in the world. Go and build a house for yourselves, but beware of the big bad pig. Don't worry, mother. We'll watch out for him, said the three little wolves, and they set off. That means that they started their adventure. Soon they were met by a kangaroo who was pushing a wheelbarrow full of red and yellow books. Isn't that boring? Please, will you give us some of your bricks, asked the three little wolves. Certainly, said the kangaroo, and she gave them lots of red and yellow bricks. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of bricks. Already my mind's kind of like, what? This is totally different than the other versions we've read. The very next day, the big pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of bricks that the wolves had built. The three little wolves were playing croquet in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside the house and <laughs> locked the door. This is croquet, where you hit balls with a mallet. The pig knocked on the door and grunted. Little wolves, little wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china pot. Well, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed, but the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his sledgehammer and he knocked the house down. Okay, this is totally different than the ones we read, Cash. The three little wolves only managed to just escape before the bricks crumbled and they were very frightened indeed. We should have built a stronger house, they said. Just then they saw a beaver who was mixing concrete in a concrete mixer. Please, will you give us some of your concrete? Asked the three little wolves. Concrete is like cement. It's like the sidewalks. Uh, certainly, said the beaver. He gave them buckets and buckets full of messy, slurry concrete. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of concrete. Okay, that's pretty hard. That's like the sidewalk. Okay, this is going to, oh boy. No sooner had they finished than that big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of concrete that the little wolves had built. They were playing battledore and shuttlecock in the garden. And then with and when they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house and shut the door. The pig ran the doorbell, ding dong, and said, little frightened wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair in our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed, but the house, of course, didn't fall down. I mean, it's made of cement. You can't blow that down. <gasps> well, oh boy. Oh, oh my gosh. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his pneumatic drill and snatched the house down. Pneumatic drill is the fancy word for jackhammer. Oh my gosh. The three little wolves managed to escape, but their chinny chin chins were trembling and trembling and trembling. I mean, their little chins, they were shaking. They were so frightened. We shall build an even stronger house, they said, and because they were very determined, just then they saw a truck coming down a lot. I'm going to reread that because that didn't go right. We shall build an even stronger house, they said, because they were very determined. Just then they saw a truck coming along the road carrying barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. Will you please give us some of your barbed wire, a few iron bars and armor plates and some heavy metal padlocks, they said to the rhinoceros who was driving the truck. Sure, said the rhinoceros, and he gave them plenty of barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. He also gave them some plexiglass and some reinforced steel chains because he was generous and kind-hearted rhinoceros. So the three little wolves built themselves an extremely strong house. It was the strongest, securest house one could possibly imagine. They felt absolutely safe. 
and Troy. The next day, the big bad pig came prowling along the road as usual. The three little wolves were out playing hopscotch in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house, bolted the door, and locked all 37 ooh, padlocks. The pig dialed the video entrance phone and call and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chins, let me come in. No, 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 said the little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you come in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. <laughs> then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed and he huffed and he puffed, but the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He brought some, mm, look at that word, dynamite, and laid it against the house and lit the fuse. This pig is insane. <gasps> the house blew up. The three little wolves just managed to escape with their fluffy tails scorched. Scorched means they were burnt. Something must be wrong with our building materials, they said. We have to try something different, but what? At that moment, they saw a flamingo coming along, pushing a wheelbarrow full of flowers. Please, will you give us some flowers? Asked the little wolves. With pleasure, said the flamingo, and he gave them lots of flowers. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of flowers. Okay, now I'm confused. Are you thinking the same thing I'm thinking? But, okay. One wall was of marigolds, one of daffodils, and one of pink roses, and one of cherry blossoms. The ceiling was made of sunflowers, and the floor was a carpet of daisies. They had water lilies in their bathtub and buttercups in their refrigerator. It was a rather fragile house, and it swayed in the wind. It was very beautiful. The next day, the big bad pig, this book is not going to end well, came prowling down the road, and he saw the house of flowers that the three little wolves had built. He rang the doorbell, or sorry, he rang the bluebell, at the door and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chins and the scorched tails, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair at our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Well, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. Okay, he's totally going to do it this time, right? But as he took a deep breath, ready to huff and puff, he smelled the soft scent of flowers. It was fantastic. And because the scent was so lovely, the pig took another breath and then another. And instead of huffing and puffing, he began to sniff. That's where you smell through your nose. He sniffed deeper and deeper until he was quite filled with the fragrant scent. His heart grew tender and he realized how horrible he had been. Right then he decided to become a big, good pig. He started to sing and dance the tanta. At first, the three little wolves were a little bit worried. It might be a trick, but soon they realized that the pig had truly changed. So they came running out of the house and they started playing games with him. First, they played pig pog and then piggy in the middle. And when they were all tired, they invited him into their house. They offered him tea and strawberries and wolf berries and asked him to stay with them for as long as he wanted. The pig accepted and they all lived happily together ever after. What? This is totally not what I anticipated. Oh my gosh. Were you surprised by how this book went? I hope so. I love you. Now think of a way that you can compare and contrast it to the other versions we've read. Thanks. Bye.